once again, everybody, thank you for tuning in. We're going to hop into the good, bad, ugly. I'll go ahead and start off, and from there we'll go with Grant and Nick, and we'll kind of chat off of that. Um, so I think my good for the week is Austin Riley becoming a first-time dad. That dad strength has come through in the last handful of games um, with his bomb today, and then uh, just the other yesterday, I believe, is whenever it was either yesterday or Friday, whenever he hit his other home run. Um, so I it's I remember seeing something that might have been one of Grant's uh, tweets, if not uh, maybe Mark Bowman, is that. At this time last year, Riley didn't have a home run, um, which is great. Through the first 15 games, he didn't have a home run. He's already sitting at four, uh, and he's seen the ball well. I mean, I, he's that slider's no longer a problem. He's able to, to stay on that fastball like he did whenever he first came up um, a handful of years ago. So, to me, that's my good. Um, the bad, I'm going to upgrade him, but Dansby, there's some games where he's showing that he's coming back around, but then today – he goes back, has another three strikeouts. You know, they all kind of, you know, they have their struggles. It's a slow start. And obviously I know Grant probably talked about this, not much having a spring, but in a contract year for Dansby, you would hope that he's got a little bit more pep in his step right now to kind of get paid a little bit more. I know he loves Atlanta, um, but, you know, obviously people are kind of in it for the money too. Uh, so just kind of, I would say bad just because he's, he had a solid game. The other, obviously today was kind of a step back in my mind. And then the ugly still, Eddie's, you know, Eddie's offensive uh, woes. He's he's not playing too well. I don't know if it's because he's out there and right, and he's just not too comfortable with it. Um, but to me, that's the ugly. I know he's eventually going to pick it up, um, but for right now, it's just tough to see, you know, that below, you know, right at 100 or below batting average for with the entire year. So that's my good, bad, and ugly. Nick, or, uh, Grant, if you want to go ahead and kind of give yours. Yeah, I think that this is a club that hasn't obviously hit its stride yet. There has been some good. I mean, I would circle what Max Fried and in particular Kyle Wright have done in the Braves rotation. I don't think anybody has caught more of the attention of Braves fans over the early going with all respect to Matt Olson, who has certainly made a great first impression, but Kyle Wright, because we've been watching this guy for a long time and we've heard about him ever since he was a high first round draft pick for the Braves back in 2017. What's this guy going to mean to this club? And when is he going to be able to become a, a regular contributor, carve out his spot in the starting rotation and hold on to it? And I think that we're starting to feel like that time could finally be now. And, you know, I don't want to make too many excuses for what the reasons why he didn't do it before. I'm sure he doesn't want to think about those excuses anymore. But I do think that 2021 was maybe his most important developmental year because he, when he went down to Gwinnett, he wasn't up and down, up and down, up and down five, six, seven, eight times last year like some other pitchers were. He just went down there, and with the exception of a, a brief stint in Atlanta, he was pitching and trying to get back to what made Kyle Wright Kyle Wright, not what did the Braves think Kyle Wright's arsenal needed to be when he was drafted. I know they wanted him to go heavy, fastball, slider, but I, I just felt like you know he can throw a mid-90s and up fastball. He can also throw a good two-seam sinking fastball, and he's got more, I feel, of a power curveball that – is a better pitch for him. And he can, you know, keep hitters honest with the change. He's really got four pitches he can use. And that I think has made him a more complete pitcher. He's had time to really iron it out in Gwinnett as of last year. And having a guy like Charlie Morton on the staff, I think is a great model to build from and a great sounding board to be able to work from as well. So I would circle Kyle Wright as the real good of the Braves. Max Fried certain has been showing it as well. Matt Olson, Marcelo Zuna have certainly uh, been able to hit and help provide the Braves offense along with Austin Riley. As far as the bad, I mean, I might just lump the entire Braves outfield in that for now. All respect to how Marcel has been hitting, the rest of the group hitting-wise has been underwhelming, and the fielding has really been problematic several times for the Braves this year. So getting Ronald Acuna Jr. back is going to make such a difference to not only the Braves lineup, but also how they deploy these guys in the outfield. I'd say that's my good and my bad from the first couple weeks of the year. Do you have an ugly? An ugly. Yes. Like, was, like the, the, the basement of, of what we don't want to see anymore. Okay. So we're going full on spaghetti Western. Good. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, yep. You know, not winning a series in your first two few, few outings of the year would be an ugly. I would say that, you know, not really being able to string together hits and being able to hit with runners in scoring position has been a bit ugly and the walks have been troublesome from the pitching staff. So if you're asking for one, I'll give you three. <laughs> Um, you and I have kind of, uh, almost identical bad is bad has been different, but, um, you know, the good from this week, I, I know Max Fried had a dominant outing against, uh, against the Dodgers. We got to the fifth inning and I was like, 
he's looking really, really good. Didn't want to say it. Yeah. Um, I, he had some some writers and some some people in the booth who who didn't have a problem with saying it. I'm not going to say it cost him the perfect game, but you know how baseball works. Um, and then obviously Kyle Wright, both of them had amazing outings this week. You know, Max Reed struggled kind of in his first two starts, was not what he was in the second half last season. We had a flash of that on uh, Tuesday night, I believe, and it was nice to see. I'm hoping he can carry that over into this week. Um, bad, um, kind of the bullpen on Saturday night was was kind of like the main thing that stuck out to me this entire week. It was just they could not get a person out to save their life. Um, you know, we put up seven runs I, aside from uh, – the game against the Nationals last week. I mean, I, we haven't seen the offense do something like that this year. So when some when the offense is able to do that, the bullpen's got to do their job and, and get it done no matter what it takes. Um, and then the ugly is, uh, like you said, not being able to win a series this season. Um, we did that um, the first homestand we had last year. That's something we did early. We beat the Phillies two, uh, two out of three on the first homestand. So not being able to do that so far this season has obviously been an ugly um, and, and that's where I'll, I'll stand on that. But Grant, you and I kind of um, were able to match up on some things when it comes to the good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah, and I think it's really important to stress what Kyle Wright has been, kind of like what Grant was saying, because the entire, entire spring training preseason, everybody said, okay, one, two, three is obviously Max, Charlie, Ian. Who's going to be that four and five? And especially with Soroka coming back in July, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, that this could be a very solid one through five. If Soroka comes back to what Soroka was before the Achilles injury, is that if Kyle leaning on Borton, which is what it looks like, because that, that slider curveball right now is very identical to what Morton looks has whenever he is on. Um, and so I think that's that's going to be really important. Bryce Elder is obviously doing, a, I would say, an above average job for kind of being thrown into the mix right away without even nobody expected him to even be close to where he is right now. Being in the major because of the whole 10 day period. Yeah, I think with Bryce Elder getting an early season rep, an early season opportunity was probably not on the list of things you thought you'd see because you'd hope that Waskari Noah or Tucker Davidson or even Spencer Strider might be the guy in the fifth, sixth spot or some combination of the two out of those three guys. But I think it, it, what you saw early on, at least, was just uh, some inconsistency. And I think that I would track this back more so for the starting pitchers than anybody else. I mean, I guess you can make a case for the hitters, too. But more so for the starting pitchers, because these are uh, creatures of habit and guys who need routines and guys who need some reps in order to get into that routine so that they can go to every fifth day knowing exactly what's going to be coming their way, exactly you know where they are in terms of the work that they've done and how they feel arm wise. So, you know, maybe losing two, three weeks of spring training isn't as big a deal from a fan perspective, or even I think the players feel like it's too long, but kind of rushing everything in after the lockout, I, I think that might've set some teams and particularly some pitchers back in terms of their overall comfort level early in the season. But as we get two and a half, three, four weeks into the year, as we will be, when we wrap up April, that kind of has needed to work itself out, even though you had to do some of it in actual in-game action. And, you know, I don't know if Bryce Elder is necessarily the answer right now. I do like the way he competes out there. I know that's something Brian Snickers pointed to a lot, but an awful lot of walks. And that usually, as we've seen with Kyle Wright or Tuki Toussaint or even Ian Anderson at times, if you're not able to throw strikes consistently and allow major league hitters to sit back and start taking a lot of pitches and you work yourself into a jam, that can create opportunities for things to go wrong. I think the fifth inning on Sunday was a good example of that, given you got a lifetime infielder playing in the outfield. And there's been a couple of these things for Orlando Arcia that have been kind of head scratching, but that's who you got right now. Until you get Ronald back, until you move Eddie back to left field, or you move Duvall to left field and put a Ozuna in center, or if you have Heredia out there or somebody that's just a more normal, everyday outfielder with a comfort level, maybe some of those plays won't happen. But the leadoff walk in that inning, kind of opened the door for there to be a little bit more trouble than there needed to be. I know the zone's been inconsistent, but this is two starts in a row with five walks and then six walks. That's not really the Bryce Elder that we saw having success at AAA Gwinnett and earning this call-up. That's something I'm sure he's looking to clean up. 